This is the Navigating Nightingales, and we will be discussing the application of Kolkaba's comfort theory in the three nurse educator roles. We will be using the movie Philadelphia to discuss these roles. This is a motion picture that was inspired in part by Jeffrey Bauer's AIDS discrimination lawsuit and the struggle of many others who, along with their loved ones, have experienced discrimination because of AIDS. Highline Incorporated is now represented by Wyatt, Wheeler, Hellerman, Tetlow, and Brown. And more specifically, Andrew Beckett. Yes! Bravo! I sincerely appreciate your faith in my abilities. Mr. Beckett! <laughs> How are you? What do I mean, faith? I have AIDS. Oh. I'm seeking representation. You want to sue Wyatt, Wheeler, Hellerman, Tetlow, and Brown? I was diagnosed with AIDS eight months ago during a bout with pneumonia. It was on your forehead, pal. I envy everyone in this room is your friend. I misplaced an important complaint. That's their story. We've been talking it over. Your future, that is, and we feel that because we respect you so much, we must be honest with you. Excuse me. Am I being fired? Would you accept a client if you were constantly thinking, I don't want this person to touch me. I have a case. I don't want him to even breathe on me. You don't want it for personal reasons. Thank you. That's correct. I don't. That's very disappointing. Sir, would you be more comfortable in a research room? No. Would it make you more comfortable? Back it, how you doing? Counselor. Did you find a lawyer? There's going to be things said at the trial that are going to be hard for you to hear. I want to know everything about his personal life. What deviant roof did he secretly belong to? I didn't raise my kids to sit in the back of the bus. Is Andrew Beckett the kind of lawyer who misplaces crucial documents? An excellent lawyer. Andrew Beckett is dying. You were impressed with Andrew Beckett's work. Andrew Beckett is angry. What powerful force has caused him to change his mind? He wants someone to pay. TriStar Pictures presents The Law's Been Broken. I just want what is fair, what is right. You remember the law, don't you? A Jonathan Demi picture. So let's talk about what this case is really all about. Did you fire Andrew Beck because he had AIDS? The general public's hatred, our loathing, our fear. In this courtroom, Mr. Miller, justice is blind to matters of sexual orientation. We don't live in this courtroom, do we? Tom Hanks. I love the law. Denzel Washington. Are you gay? Objection! In a story about our lives. Oh, Mom, today's a good day. Our fears. And they brought AIDS into our offices. And our humanity. Philadelphia. How many lawyers you go to before you call me? Nine. Next, I'm going to discuss the impact of the illness depicted on the patient and the family. And you've seen an emotional impact throughout this whole movie, both with Miguel, Andy's partner, and his family. In one scene, Andy and Miguel are in the emergency room, and Miguel becomes very upset at a doctor for wanting him to perform a procedure that he thinks is not necessary. The doctor tells Miguel that he can have him removed from the hospital because of his actions and being so angry. And since he wasn't a relative of Andy's, well, of course, that made Miguel act even stronger. Andy intervened and ended up pacifying both of them and proposing an alternative to wait and to see his primary physician. Andy is also physically affected by the illness as well as emotionally so. He tried not to show up, but did break down on a couple of occasions when his strength of will failed him. One example was in the bathroom with his friends or, who were trying to apply makeup to his face to hide the telltale sign of a Kaposi sarcoma on his face. And Andy's family is emotionally impacted by his illness when he goes to speak with them to tell them that he will be filing a lawsuit against a law firm that fired him unrightfully. The public will now know of his HIV diagnosis and his homosexual behavior. The community may then view his family differently and change their behavior toward them. 
problems experienced by patients with HIV and AIDS. These are people who have a chronic disease and they may be subject to various infections and illnesses. AIDS and the infections associated with this disease do not have a predictable course. The fear of death was especially evident during the trial. Tom Hanks' character wasn't sure his life would last through the end of the trial. And although the medications for HIV-positive patients are much improved, the pervasive thinking is still that of imminent death for those with the disease. During the late 1980s and early 1990s, the lack of understanding about the transmission of the virus that causes AIDS made people feel afraid of interacting with a person known to have the disease. And that also caused a great deal of stigma for that individual. Cobles Kaba's comfort theory is a middle range theory that proposes if patients are comfortable both mentally and physically, they are more likely to engage in self health seeking behaviors, which then determine their level of wellness or peacefulness. And this is intended to be an easily grasped and easily applied theory. Kolkaba draws from other nursing theories to describe types of comfort, which are relief, ease, and transcendence. The comfort theory guides nurses, guides nurses to detect comfort needs of patients and families. When this occurs, interventions can be developed to meet these needs. Such interventions include making eye contact, sitting beside an anxious patient, holding a dying patient's hands, and listening attentively. Each of these examples are holistic comfort interventions that have a positive effect on the patient's total comfort. There are major assumptions of the comfort theory, and these major assumptions must be in place in order for the theory to work, and that is that certain interventions are addressed that meet the patient's holistic needs and basic human needs, such as rest, homeostasis, and therapeutic communication. There's also a major assumption that increased comfort strengthens the recipient for tasks ahead, which are known as health-seeking behaviors, and also an increased engagement in health-seeking behaviors enables the institution to identify and gather evidence for best practice and policies which lead to quality care. There are three major concepts of the comfort theory, comfort, comfort interventions, and health-seeking behaviors. This diagram displays a pattern for practicing comfort management. This kind of care is individualized, efficient, holistic, and therapeutic. Next, I will talk about the use of Kolkaba's comfort theory regarding fear of death and uncertainty of the course of illness. And this is how it relates to the patient. The patient educator must address the pain by educating about both non-pharmaceutical and pharmaceutical options. They must also discuss the course of the illness and treatments thoroughly to address any fear Andy may have. They must also listen to Andy and hear all concerns regarding this terminal illness. As for the ease portion of the theory, Andy was unjustly fired. He was still capable of working and desired to have a purpose in life. While he could not return to work, he found his purpose on his own through his lawsuit which his previous, with his previous employers. The patient educator could assist this by treating his symptoms and encouraging him to take care of himself. While the patient educator is willing and available to talk, they could also offer other opportunities for the patient to express themselves, either in the form of a support group or counseling. This would ease anxiety and provide support through the course of Andy's terminal illness. In the movie, Andy was told by his medical physician to reduce stress, but he was a lawyer and he loved his job. The nurse educator should explain the reasoning behind the recommendation of stress reduction and assist Andy in finding ways of doing so such as meditation or finding a relaxing hobby. Transcendence is a state of mind. Andy needs to attain to be at peace with his illness and its course. The nurse educator, with use of both comfort and ease, would prepare Andy for his journey to the end of life. This can be done by utilizing hospice care, providing spiritual support, and ensuring Andy is in a comfortable environment surrounded by the people he loves. Transcendence occurred in the movie when Andy, at his bedside, said, I'm ready. His family had gathered around and said their goodbyes. The staff educator must ensure the healthcare team understands the disease process 
symptoms to expect, and how to manage them. This is the same for the academic educator regarding the knowledge students require to care for Andy. Both the staff educator and academic educator should be made aware of resources available for Andy to utilize and help him maintain a good quality of life for as long as possible. The students and care team members must also understand the importance of taking time to be patient with Andy and empathetic to his situation. The use of Kolkaba's comfort theory regarding fear of death and uncertainty of the course of the illness for the family of Andy. For the family of Andy, comfort also starts with the nurse educator revealing what to expect during the course of Andy's illness. This will reduce fear and anxiety knowing what to expect. Explaining how pain or other symptoms will be treated will also help alleviate fear for his loved ones. Offering support to all Andy's loved ones and accepting who he chooses to keep involved in his care is also important to ease concerns for his family. Support can be in the form of listening with empathy and recommending support groups for counseling. As explained in the previous slide, the family was present in Andy's final moments. They helped create a warm environment filled with love and said their goodbyes to Andy prior to leaving for the night. They knew he was near the end and had accepted this fact. His family was successful in finding the state of mind they required to be at peace. The patient educator could have assisted his family in finding this by working through the two earlier pieces of this comfort theory with them. If able, the patient educator can educate their friends on ways to support Andy and his family. An example of this may include setting up a meal train or offering to help on errands. As for the staff educator and academic educator, they must remind both the care team members and students to provide care for Andy's family too. Andy is not the only one dealing with his illness. It greatly affects his loved ones, and they too need assistance navigating through its course. The staff must be aware of additional holistic needs for the family as they deal with the imminent loss of a loved one and set up support systems for them to lean on when Andy is gone. It can be difficult to accept another person's life choices, but students and staff members alike need to be taught how to leave their personal beliefs and feelings at home. In the movie, when Andy was in the hospital and the physician did, did not consider Andy li Andy's life partner somewhat of importance or his health care power of attorney, this had caused additional stress for all parties involved. The academic and staff educator need to make students and staff aware of how health care power of attorneys work and how one is designated. Andy was of sound mind and this should have been addressed and taken seriously before he was unable to make the decision for himself. Staff and students must respect his wishes. The use of Kolkaba's comfort theory regarding the stigma of HIV AIDS for the patient Andy and his family. The stigma of HIV AIDS plays a critical role in Andy's ability to live at ease. People he considered family began to treat him as a walking, deadly, infectious disease and no longer the Andy they once knew. The nurse educator can play an important role in helping Andy and his loved ones understand the fear of others, and also the fear Andy may have of living in a world free to him. By educating about the disease transmission process, Andy will be prepared to educate the world around him. This would help clear up misconceptions. The movie depicted Andy's bosses and even his eventual lawyer afraid to touch him, afraid of the germs he will spread by touching their belongings. The educator could offer support by providing educational material such as pamphlet, pamphlets, websites, or offering support groups for anyone in Andy's life interested in learning more. Setting up counseling for Andy and his family to help cope with the stigma of HIV AIDS may be necessary as well. Ultimately, aiding Andy and his family in reaching a level of acceptance in that others may never fully understand his illness is the only realistic goal. Encouraging Andy and his loved ones to support each other will promote transcendence for all involved. The movie did not demonstrate moments regarding the stigma of HIV and AIDS with healthcare professionals or students. It was mentioned often that there was a link between homosexuality and obtaining this disease. Thankfully, the movie also revealed that HIV can be transmitted via a blood transfusion. However, it also expressed that Andy did this to himself while the person with HIV from a blood transfusion was an innocent party. 
staff and academic educators must ensure this belief is cleared up. Andy was living his life and did not seek out HIV AIDS deliberately. He too is an innocent party in this and it could happen to anyone. Of course, the disease process being discussed as mentioned earlier would address transmission and also the odds of transmission with a needle stick being very low. This will provide comfort to the students and staff, thus allowing them to provide the same care to Andy as they would to any other patient they see. If the staff or students require assistance for better understanding their feelings about this disease and how it is often associated with a certain way of life, counseling might be a helpful option to explore. Of course, the goal is to have staff and students understand that touch does not transmit HIV or AIDS, and the handshake, hand on the shoulder, or a hug may be just what Andy and his family need to feel acceptance as human beings. When the staff and students are at ease with Andy and his family, the environment for his care will be warm and welcoming, thus creating comfort for everyone. Using the guide of Kolkaba's comfort theory to guide staff education. Fear of death, uncertainty of disease progression, and stigma are problems frequently experienced by patients living with HIV and often manifested through depression. In order to provide holistic care for these patients, staff must be trained in recognizing the signs and symptoms of depression, such as withdrawal, decreased appetite, inattention to physical appearance, and a decrease or absence of activities that the patient previously enjoyed. Educating staff regarding the available resources for patients, such as the ones mentioned here or others available within the specific facility, should be undertaken on a regular basis. This education can be accomplished also through annual competencies, either online or perhaps through an annual education fair. The use of Kolkaba's comfort theory to guide staff education. Specific education should be provided to nursing staff. Nursing staff should be educated on ways the patient's comfort needs can be addressed, such as physical needs, nutrition, hydration, elimination, and pain control. Those should be assessed per the facility's policy and protocol and documented accordingly in the medical record. However, discomfort can also be attributed to other sources, such as financial stress due to treatment expenses, cultural insensitivity, or spiritual needs that can be addressed by a chaplain or social worker. Even provision for environmental needs, such as a comfortable room temperature, a warm blanket, or noise reduction, is important in the holistic care of the patient living with HIV. According to Kokaba's theory, when comfort needs are met, patients are more inclined towards health-seeking behaviors which will improve their quality of life. It is important that nursing staff recognize that their response to patients' needs can make or break the treatment experience for the patient or family. Don't underestimate the value of just being present with the patient. Be completely undistracted. Give them their full attention and allow him or her to guide the discussion. Sometimes patients just want to be heard and understood. Other times the patient may not want to talk at all. Patients living with HIV may crave human touch since they feel ostracized, or stigmatized by society, even though a diagnosis of HIV is no longer considered a death sentence. HIV is now considered to be a chronic illness, and with proper treatment, patients can live long, fulfilling lives. However, among much of the patient population, that stigma still exists. Patients living with HIV feel stigmatized within society, even though there are 1.2 million Americans currently living with the diagnosis. The stigma still exists that somehow the patient's actions or behaviors cause the disease. Even among healthcare workers, stigma still exists. The staff educator can help to address this issue. Since discussion of stigmas and stereotyping can be sensitive for some, this would be best undertaken in a small group setting, such as a unit staff meeting. A questionnaire regarding stigmas related to patients living with HIV, HIV can be distributed a week prior to the scheduled meeting. This questionnaire would address staff members' feelings regarding caring for patients with HIV. This questionnaire would serve as a self-evaluation of the staff member's level of comfort, as well as a springboard for more in-depth discussion in caring for these patients. HIV and AIDS is no longer the feared disease it once was. 
Effective antiretroviral therapy has led to HIV being considered a chronic disease rather than a terminal illness. HIV-positive patients now commonly live long, productive lives. Because of the decrease of media attention on HIV and AIDS, less attention is also being given to the education of nursing students regarding the care of these patients. In Frayne's report, the overwhelming response of the new graduate nurse was that they felt unprepared to care for HIV-positive patients. Academic nurse educators have an obligation to address this subject with their students. An example of how to educate nursing students would be to arrange for individual guests to speak to the nursing students regarding their personal experiences. For an example, an HIV case manager, a pharmacist specialist in HIV medications, an RN working in an HIV clinic, an HIV research nurse, as well as individuals living with the diagnosis of HIV could come and speak to the students about quality of care from their perspectives. The HIV case manager could provide information on community resources to address physical and mental health of HIV patients. The clinical pharmacist could educate the group about the most current antiretroviral therapy, drug resistance and interactions, and advances in pharmacological treatment. The RN working in an HIV clinic would dis address concerns regarding how HIV is and not, is not transmitted. The research RN would discuss current HIV studies. And HIV positive speakers could share their experiences about how it has affected their lives. Students would be allowed to ask questions, deferring to the comfort level of the speaker. This would give the students a perspective on how fear, uncertainty, and stigma are problems shared by most of those living with this diagnosis. Students could also watch the film and the band played on as a group. This film provides an introduction to the early years of the HIV AIDS epidemic and can provide perspective on how far treatment has advanced during the past three decades. There are limitations to the use of Kolkaba's comfort theory. One is the patient who has not come to term with their diagnosis of HIV. They're living in a state of denial. It's going to be difficult to address comfort needs with a patient or even a family member that denies a need. Nurses must also be able to dedicate time in meeting the needs of these patients, which can be difficult due to increased patient-to-nurse ratios. It can be difficult for a nurse to provide emotional support to a patient when she feels that she is obligated to be in other patients' rooms. Providing emotional comfort to patients and families is also a skill that cannot be taught, but rather one that is innate. And Kokaba's comfort theory is limited to the use in a clinical setting, such as a hospital or a hospice center. This concludes our discussion on Kolkaba's comfort theory application in the three nurse educator roles, and we have abided by the academic honor policy on this assignment.